The Galaxy S20 Ultra is Samsung's S-series flagship for 2020, and glass is still glass. Somehow this one was hit hard enough to tear the glass and digitizer away from the OLED panel below it. The back panel is held in with waterproofing adhesive and is slightly more curved over the frame than last year's, but with some heat and isopropyl alcohol it comes up in one piece. This metal shield secures down the LEGO style connectors to the board, including the battery. It has one hidden screw below the NFC and wireless charging pad, which is basically just a sticker over the back. With all the screws removed and the wireless pad set to the side, disconnecting the battery is pretty important. But the battery connector is still held down by a big 5G antenna ribbon. I'll disconnect both of those, then carry on removing the four Phillips head screws from the top midframe. followed by five screws on the bottom speaker assembly. Samsung again included pry points for easy removal. They're even marked by an arrow engraved in the plastic. After removing the plastic midframe, I can disconnect the three ribbons that bridge the mother and daughter boards, and this short little power and volume flex connector. The leftmost ribbon doesn't go to the daughter board, but instead feeds under the metal frame and connects directly to the screen. The charge port itself is held in by three more Phillips head screws. It can then be pried up and out of the frame, revealing a bright red pad below the port. I'll remove the two Phillips head screws that secure the camera assembly in place. The SIM tray needs to be removed before the main board can come out. This is a big 108 megapixel camera. Here's the main 12 megapixel camera from an iPhone XS for comparison. The massive main sensor does have optical image stabilization. The ultra wide has no stabilization, but doesn't really need it. The massive periscope camera has a four times optical zoom and does have optical stabilization as well. Next, there are two 5G antenna blocks that need to be removed. They are each held in with two Phillips head screws. They have their own compartments milled out of the frame and are strategically placed to maximize signal reception. I'll get the new cube style vibrate motor out of the frame. Time to break out the booze, but we're not celebrating just yet. The massive 5000 mAh battery is nearly cemented to the frame with non-removable adhesive. It takes a lot of heat and alcohol to safely remove it without bending it. I'll grab the new frame and start installing components like the 5G antennas. The vibration motor needs to be installed before the charge port can be seated down. I'll put the three screws back in place. Next, I'll push some of these flex connections off to the side to make room for the main board to be installed in the new housing. Replacing the two Phillips head screws that secure the camera assembly to the frame. The battery is secured down with a little less adhesive than last time, but still enough to keep it from rocking around or becoming loose. I'll get the original selfie camera reinstalled. Despite Hugh Jeffries discovering that parts aren't serialized and proving my old claim to be false, I'll need to retain the original camera as this replacement part is likely an international version that seems to use a different sensor or possibly firmware than the US. I received several supposedly US camera replacement parts from two or more vendors, but have determined they are not compatible with any of the US S20 phones I repair. More testing will be required. The main power ribbon and signal ribbons are reattached completing the connection of daughter and mother board. The battery needs to be briefly reconnected in order to attach the left 5G antenna before we move on to reinstalling the plastic midframe. This particular piece didn't want to be installed and removed itself. I'll just set that back down and encourage it to stay put by replacing one of the screws. 
The metal shield is slipped into place and the screws are reinstalled along with the remaining screws for the plastic frame at the top. The bottom speaker frame is snapped back into place and secured with those five Phillips head screws. I'll line up the wireless charging coil and connect it to the board. Then reinsert the SIM tray. I'll apply some 3M tape primer to the frame of the device to get a secure bond with the adhesive on the back glass panel and carefully align it over the cameras and press firmly into place. This device appears to be working well. I'll fully test it before returning it to its owner. Let me know in the comments what devices you'd like to see repaired. And I'll see you next time.